Welcome to our homestead. Welcome inside of our kitchen. If you have a big harvest from your garden, there are many ways to preserve things, but sometimes one of the best ways is to juice it, especially with fruit. Today, we are going to show you how to steam juice. And we are gonna be comparing that with our masticating juicer over here, and actually even talking about our centrifugal juicer over here. And today we are gonna be juicing these beautiful Carlos variety muscadine grapes. So before we go through the process of showing you exactly how to use the steam juicer, we're gonna talk about how the masticating juicer works and the centrifugal juicer works when it comes to dealing with grapes. And especially muscadine grapes because of the grape flesh consistency. So there are a lot of videos out there that do compare centrifugal juicers to masticating juicers, but they don't compare them to a steam juicer. Centrifugal juicers are notorious for not getting out a good amount of juice. They always lag behind masticating juicers. Masticating juicers are slower. They work on a really slow RPM, usually 50 to 100 revolutions per minute, and they really squeeze out a lot of juice. So I know what you're gonna say is, Eric, you're killing off the nutrients when you're steam juicing. And let's talk about that for a second. Now, yes, when you apply heat, the very sensitive <clears throat> vitamins like C and A are reduced quite a bit, if not completely taken out of that process. So any juice you buy in the store is pasteurized. So it's gonna be devoid of vitamin C or vitamin A and a few others unless they artificially add them back in. So if you're juicing for a raw diet and the optimal amount of vitamins and minerals, the masticating juicer is going to be the best. That's simply because of its low speed and it does not oxidize the juice quickly and you can contain more of those very sensitive and volatile vitamins at the beginning, like A and C. A centrifugal juicer is working on a speed of six to 10,000, sometimes 13,000 RPM, spinning a basket inside and throwing that juice out to the edge. What that does is incorporate a lot of air into it and the A and C and others break down quite quickly. But yes, Definitely not as quickly as if you steam juice it. However, if you're making jams and jellies and you have just a massive amount of fruit that you need to process, the steam juicer is the best. And that is because the amount that this is going to hold. This can hold up to about five or six pounds of fruit and really depends on what you put in there. This thing, See this really skinny tube at the top? It is difficult to get more than a few grapes through there at one time. Yes, we can tamp them down with this tamper right here and kind of push them through, but it is extremely slow. So if you are processing just a massive amount from your vineyard, we have roughly eight grapevines. That is a lot of grapevines and they produce a ton of grapes. You are gonna be spending a lot of time juicing those grapes with something like the masticating juicer. Over here, we are gonna make jelly with our eventual juice that we get out of here and then can it. So it is going to be heat processed anyway. If you make a jam or a juice or a jelly with this, it's gonna be heat processed also if you're canning it to save it for later. Now the opening on our centrifugal juicer is bigger, but it still does take quite a bit of time and it honestly wastes a lot of juice. Let's talk about our steam juicer and how it's designed and then we are gonna show you exactly how to make that juice. So this bottom portion here is the water reservoir. This is where we are going to get our boiling water from and you wanna to continue to check this throughout your juicing process to make sure there's enough water and that it does not run dry. The next portion here is our juice collection pot, and that sits on top, and you can see this is where the juice is gonna exit, through this tube right here. On the inside, the steam comes through this funnel, and it comes up, steams the grapes or fruit, whatever you have in the top basket. The juice is gonna fall down in here, and then it will exit out the tube. Yes, you will get a little bit of juice that goes through the center, but not much. That's why it's designed like this. And you will get a little bit of water in the juice, but that's no big deal. And then the steam basket that sits on top has these holes, and that's for the steam to get in 
and the juice to get out. And it will contain all of your pulp and anything else that ends up in here from getting into your juice. And then obviously we have a top. So I know a lot of you are gonna ask, well, show us the masticating juicer. Okay, let's do that with these grapes because that's what I'm harvesting now. The masticating juicer does work incredibly well for things like leafy greens, for drinking and getting raw juice like that. It does work well for things like, hard things like carrots and apples. Although you have to break them down really small to get them in this tube. But let's show you this, these grapes. Now, like with anything, you wanna wash everything off before you stick it in any juicer. However, the mesh screens that are contained on the side of the blade, right next to the auger and the screen here, do a good job of filtering out a lot. As you can see, only, only can get a few in there at a time. And I've got to tamp them down quite a bit to get them down in there. So you can see the masticating juicer does a good job of separating the pulp from the juice. And the juice is highly nutritious, but doing it this way is going to take me absolutely forever. That's why I'm so excited to get this going for you guys. Let's get our water boiling and our grapes inside the basket. The grapes should take about 30 minutes to start to break down enough where they start releasing their juice. And we will show you as soon as that happens. From there, grapes should take about another 30 minutes to completely release all of their juice. And each steam juicer should come with a little booklet like this, which shows you two little charts of approximate times for different fruits and vegetables. We really love this one and we will list it for you in the description below the video. And if you are interested, we will list the masticating and the centrifugal juicers down there as well. So it's been only about five minutes and I can really smell this beautiful grape smell coming from this. So it's working pretty quickly. Now I know there's gonna be a comment or two about the time that this is going to take, 30 minutes to initially get the juice and then up to 60 minutes to uh, extract all the juice. And that time compared to the masticating juicer. It very well could take maybe the exact same amount of time. But here's the thing, with the masticating juicer, I have to stand there for potentially an hour and feed it a few grapes at a time to get that juice to come out. And the reservoir that contains the juice at the bottom of that juicer is not very big. So I'm gonna be continually moving that, getting more, getting the pulp out, so on and so forth. This one, I can just set it and forget it. I know I don't like that analogy, and I'm gonna monitor it, but you can just set this and go and do some other things. So it's essentially a time saver as well. Now when the juice is ready, we are going to have some sterilized jars ready and waiting for the juice to go into because we are going to water bath can it after that. And I know many people are gonna say, well, it's just been boiled. Why do you have to water bath can it? And that's essentially just to seal up the jars. It only needs to be water bath can for 10 minutes. And if you don't want to do it, that doesn't bother me at all. I am not strict as to the USDA rules on everything because those change all the time. I just found out recently that you don't even have to boil the lids anymore or they don't recommend it. Hey, whatever you want to do, do it that way. Just keep your family safe. So we hit our 30 minutes and let me show you what we have so far. Okay, as you can see, we've got some juice in the tube already. And if I hold it down like that, pretty much the entire tube is gonna fill up with juice. So that's, that's a decent amount to start with. Let me show you what the grapes look like. So as you can see, the grapes have already started to split open and some of them have shrunken up as they release their juice into the reservoir below. But we are preparing our water bath canner here in the back and we've got our jars already sterilized and waiting. Now, like I said, you don't have to sterilize your jar lids anymore. Just make sure the jars are clean and sterilized on the inside. You should be good to go. And I have to mention these four jars canning lids. I am an affiliate for them, but I absolutely love them. They work amazingly well, and most of the time, even better than the curves and balls. And they are on the top of all of my jars, whether I'm using them for pressure canning, water bath canning, vacuum sealing, dry canning, it does not matter. 
These four jar lids are great and they work in all situations. So you're gonna need a tall chair or a stool like this for the process just because of the location of the tube on the juicer itself. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to let through some of the juice. So just open this clip a little bit, let through some of the juice. You can see I've got quite a bit so far and it's very hot, so be careful. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour this hot juice back into the top of the steam juicer. This juice just sterilized that tube and it, ne it now needs to be re-sterilized. So, all I'm going to do is pour it back through the top and let it simmer for another minute or so and then we should be good to go to get all of that juice out of there. You're going to wipe the rim like any other canning process to make sure the seal is good. Drop on your lid and finger tighten your screw top. I'm just going to lift it from here and put it in our water bath canner. So it's been an hour, we've still got some juice coming out of here, but it's at a very slow trickle now. Let's show you what the grapes look like and how much juice we got. So we will probably be able to fill up this pint, the rest of this pint right here. And in our water bath canner, we have two pints and a quart. So essentially we're gonna get five pints out of the grapes that we initially put in there. And you could see earlier, we only filled it up a little over halfway. And those grapes look almost completely cooked down. Now you can stir them up and kind of mash them down a little bit and that will help extract the remnants of the juice. So our grapes are essentially done and I've taken the top off. You can see there's still some juice in there that does not come out of the tube. So you can just tilt it and drain it out or just pour it off. Now here's something that is extremely interesting. This is the juice from the masticating juicer and this is the juice from the steam juicer. These are from the exact same grapes. And you can see over here, obviously I have a lot of pulp in this one from the masticating juicer and there's really hardly any pulp in this one. But the hue is much different. Let's get the rest of those grapes that we picked this morning in here in processing. And then I'm gonna get the girls out here to taste test our juice. Okay, here's the juice from the steam juicer. It's a different color. It's purplish. It's purplish, that's right. Try it. it doesn't taste like that. No? It's just okay? It's okay, but it's a little sour. A little sour, oh, that's very interesting. Okay, try that one. That's from that juicer. It's sweeter. It's sweeter. It's better. Hmm, okay. It's got a lot of pulp in it, too. Mm-hmm. Very healthy. interesting. Very healthy for you, too. Very healthy for you. If you have any questions or comments for us, please leave them in the comment section below the video. And then also go check out the links for the lids and the steam juicer and the masticating juicer down there as well. Now go check out this video right here, which shows you how we make our fig preserves. Have a beautiful, blessed day, and we will see you on the next video. Bye.